more than a year of frustration with the health agent situation, the town is now pleased to announce it has hired a new full-time employee for the position. And our weekly update on the latest Charter Commission meeting. Different opinions were shared on the Board of Public Works advisory plan. Plus more meetings. We cover school committee, planning board, public works, and more. Fall activities are always a favorite. See what events are coming up later in the week. Those stories and much more ahead on LCAT News Update. I'm Rebecca Green. And I'm Allie Carrington. We begin tonight with a sigh of relief. After a year of struggling with the temporary health employment situation, the town found it crucial to make the part-time position into a full-time one. The town has officially hired Amy Petrowski as EL's new health agent. The part-time hours did not match up to the amount of work that would need to be conducted in order to fully complete the job requirements. Amy, you left because it was part-time. Do you feel you could do the job? part-time or you need it full-time? Uh, completely do the job. No. In, in part-time? In my 10 hours? No. There was no way that I could accurately and uh, do the job and do the job well with 10 hours a week. Chowski agreed to begin in two to three weeks. Now for a recap on last week's Charter Commission meeting. The committee deliberated over boards and committees. A standout topic was the Board of Public Works, which turned into a 45-minute debate. The board itself is an important component to at least put in the charter as an advisory board to the town manager. First off, the advisory individual to the town manager should be the DPW director. I don't believe that if we have a town manager who is, as we have specified, educated and experienced in, that he needs a separate board to advise him on matters as it relates to the DPW. It's um, unnecessary. Other committee members contributed their opinion, which led to disagreement. I think the DPW board is um, instrumental in our town as far as looking forwards um, a recommending body. I personally think we need them. Why can't the superintendent of public works do the same thing. And they don't need a, an appointed or an elected board to accomplish that. I still like the idea of these advisory boards recommending policy. That's, you know, I, 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 that's just the way I am, where I'm at right now. Because I don't want to put so much, and I understand what everybody's saying about the director, the, the superintendent can do it, but I don't want to put so much on their plate or the town manager's plate. You know, they, you know, we talk about centralization, but they also need the ability to delegate, too. The final vote for the Board of Public Works to be established as an advisory committee board to the town manager passed with a 5-4 to four vote. The latest Board of Public Works meeting discussed a new asset to the town. A generator will be placed at the senior center, providing backup power for COA programming in the event of an outage and creating another location to shelter residents during a town-wide emergency. One of the key things in that is up to this point the building inspector has been unable to designate that location as an emergency shelter because emergency shelters by code need to have backup power. That will now then give the town two locations between Burchland Park and the COA that are legal uh, yeah, emergency and shelters. Building. And in the past too, I know Carolyn's lost a lot of uh, food um, through her walk-in freezer over there. Every time the power goes out, she loses about three to uh, five thousand dollars worth of uh, food over there. So That's this is obviously going to yeah. help her out also. The meeting also covered upcoming milling and overlay work on town roadways. The new paving project will take place on Pease and Maple Street starting this weekend. Milling and overlay work on Pease Road, going up the Shaker Road Hill about six hundred feet, I believe. Um, starting one section right down by the Shaker intersection where we have a pretty rough patch and then heading further up the hill uh, where we have a section of pavement that's really limited to the eastbound lane that's degraded over time that will come in and mill out the lane width and then overlay or uh, replace uh, that pavement in, in that location. We are looking to do the same thing on Maple Street where we have we, we had the water main break last uh, late last winter early spring plus future plans for town hall renovations. Me and Mr. Parent met with department heads at the town hall 
on October 27th to discuss our plans for the renovation of Town Hall. Um, we met with them to uh, discuss any concerns they may have during the construction process. Speaking of future Town Hall renovations, the Board of Assessors will be affected by the construction. The Board voiced their opinions at this week's meeting. This is the plan that actually came with the um, uh, Municipal Space Study. Okay. I'm aware that we February 1st is abatement time of year and that's when a lot of people are coming in to pay their tax bills and stop in our office to ask questions regarding their assessments or maybe our seniors with the exemptions <coughs> and to make sure that the hallways are kept as clear as possible and don't tear us up until after the um, tax payments are, are done. Right. The board moved on to briefly cover a topic that affects residents, tax rate. Tax rate, again, the tax rate is 2112 yes. up from 2052. 72. 72. 40% increase. Very okay. good. Very 2 good. 2% mm -hmm. increase. Mm -hmm. And with the values for res most residential properties being pr fairly flat, mm -hmm. oh, there are some variations. There will be an increase, but it's going to be a small increase, and we'd like to thank the selectmen for not taxing to them and the appropriations committee for not going to the two and a half limit this mm -hmm. year. The school committee met this Tuesday. Superintendent Gordon Smith presents the ELPS capital plan. In your package you have uh, the spreadsheet as well as a listing of the FY 2017 projects. Um, the pricing now has been double checked with uh, Mr. Fenny, the uh, town facilities manager. Um, so we feel pretty confident in the pricing we have for all of the FY 17 projects. You have 16 projects listed there. Um, obviously the 17.5 million dollars um, mm -hmm might be a, a pretty substantial shot <laughs> in the uh, capital planning process. After back and forth discussion, the committee agreed to present the list of projects at all five schools without prioritizing them across the district. That process will take place in the future meetings as the capital planning committee considers capital needs for the entire town. A new face on a familiar local business. The planning board approved a special permit for Mario's Cafe Ambiance to open on 60 Shaker Road in the former home of Nadine's Mediterranean Grill. So to my right is uh, Tiffany Big, this is Carol Bernash, Nicole uh, Tixera, and Carrie Monroe. They're the proposed owners of the restaurant. See, uh, Ms. Tixera, she'll be the, uh, the chef and uh, the manager on the liquor license should we get through your stage uh, unanimously. Uh, this is the uh, restaurant that's right over there on Shaker Road. It was Nadim's for several years. There was an incarnation of it. I forget the exact name um, very briefly, but Pier most of it. That's what it was. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, so you may remember that, but that's the, it's the same exact space with one minor alteration. Um, if you've been there before, on the right hand side, there is, used to be a rug store there um, adjacent to other space for dining. That rug store is no longer there and is part of this application. So it's the exact same space that's always been uh, licensed before from Nadine's in the 524, except for that added couple hundred feet. The owners will also need signed permits and appropriate paperwork to follow. I'm Jim O'Connor. I live on Crookhaven Drive. I've been in town for 41 years, and I've known the Cunningham family for 39 of those 41, and uh, I can say nothing but good things about them. And I was a patron of the other restaurant they had, and I'm sure it'll be a big asset to the town of East Long Island. Another store coming to EL, Petco. On application of Petco to open up a pet store at 440 uh, North Main Street. Information related to this application is on file with the planning board and available for review by the public. The board went over precise Massachusetts laws for animal adoption. They also addressed a major concern for the public, pet odors. We have two different types of, of keeping the odors away, kind of. Uh, the first one is the more predominant one that we use is there's a cedar, um, they're like air kind of filter things. They plug into an outlet and they just, you know, sanitize the air. And then the other is uh, all of our units that house the animals have a ventilation system that is standard through any Petco store. So there's a ventilation system that goes up and out. We'll keep you posted on when the store will open. Over the Halloween weekend, the Brown Farm Committee hosted an exciting event for the community, the Brown Farm Open House. LCAT caught up with the Board of Selectmen member, Angela Thorpe, who stressed that it's up to the town to decide what to do with the area. We purchased this property some time ago and we haven't been able to use it because we found out that the Board of Selectmen needed to deem what it was going to be used for. 
There are four things that it can be used for because it was purchased with CPC money. That is historical or open space or low income housing or recreation, be it passive or full um, fledged recreation. So we invited the public up today, you know, Isla Meadows, so we can hear from you and what would you like for us to do with this? Residents were given the opportunity to fill out a survey on what they would like to see the property be used for. An address will be coming out shortly for those who were not able to attend the event to fill out the survey. We'll keep you posted when further information becomes available. Like last weekend, the community has another event to look forward to. This Saturday, November 7th, the First Congregational Church will host their annual Christmas Craft Fair. Located on the rotary of Yisong Meadow, the church will have over 60 vendors. Go enjoy the baked goods, vintage jewelry, and much more. The annual Veterans Day ceremony will take place at Town Hall on November 11th, beginning at 11 a.m. And make sure to check out the EO Library event. Local author Hannah Pearlstein Marcus will be visiting to speak about her book, Siona's Thread, a memoir that tells a story about surviving the Holocaust, a moving event that you will not want to miss. Well, that will do it for us tonight on this edition of LCAT News Update. Be sure to watch meetings on demand at our LCAT YouTube channel, LCAT01028. Follow us on Facebook and watch us on cable channel 191. I'm Rebecca Green. And I'm Allie Carrington. Until next time, good night.